Good afternoon and welcome to two hours of some of the best gymnastics you could find anywhere in the world. We've champions from ten countries on each side of the Iron Curtain for the Craft International here at Wembley Arena. The biggest name, in all senses of the word, is Oksana Emelianchik from the Soviet Union, joint women's world champion, but in some difficulty today with an ankle injury. It's almost certain now that she can't win. So there'll be a fierce challenge for the title from a strong Bulgarian contingent and indeed from Iveta Polakova, the Czech girl with enormous potential. Lisa Elliott is the great British hope after winning the national title in November. She's 17 today. Let's hope she can really celebrate. In the men's competition, it's really a straight fight between the Soviet Union and China. The Russian gymnast Alexei Tikonkik has been at the top for almost a decade, a remarkably consistent athlete with great experience. But there is, appropriately at this time, a star rising in the East. He's Zhu Jing from China. We're seeing him today for the first time here in the West. The familiar British face will be David Simpson, who's represented his country many times. One of the few British gymnasts to have a move named after him, the Simpson Spindle on the rings. And with us throughout the afternoon, former British champion Hayley Price. Hayley, what do you know about Amelia Anchik's injury? Apparently, she got injured yesterday on the floor exercise while training. She landed short out of one of the tumble runs. And um, I don't think it's a serious injury, but because she's um, quite special um, in the Soviet Union, I don't think they want her to aggravate it and so delay her even more. But at least she is making an appearance. We have seen her this afternoon. Yes, we have seen her. Um, she, she can't vault, obviously. She's not going to do the floor exercise. So she, she just oh, makes an appearance, yes. as it were. Yes, it is compulsory for um, a gymnast to present herself to the judge so that she can then carry on with the rest of the competition. I believe she's doing the bar exercise. So if she hadn't done that and hadn't actually presented herself to the judges, she would have been out? That's right. She has to make um, salute the judge so they know she's going to compete. And then she goes away. But she did compete in the asymmetric bars. Yes. I mean, does she look affected by her injury here? Um, she's obviously not affected by her injury because she's not using her ankles at the moment. But as you can see here, she slips from the Delchev somersault and it does show that even a world champion can make mistakes. Very unfortunate because I don't think now she'll make the bar finals which take place tomorrow. But then again, she's only human, she can also make errors. And she ended up with a score of 9.3 on the bars. Not a very good score for Emilia Ncek. Um, I don't think it will make the final, like I said. But having said that, it opens up the competition wide open, doesn't it? It certainly does. Um, the field this year is very, very strong indeed. In fact, I've competed in this competition four years and I've not seen a top-class field of gymnasts like there is today. Superb. OK, now t talk about uh, Lisa Elliott. We know she's now the British champion, yes. of course. She's going to see herself again as British champion in the light of world competition. How good is she? Um, to be British champion is obviously going to boost her. She's got the crowd behind her today. It's not impossible for either of the British girls to get in the medals. If they don't make a medal today, tomorrow is very important. They must score the highest score possible to get into finals tomorrow. But as we've already seen, the world champion has fallen from bars. Girls can fall from the beam. It really throws it wide open. In the men's, no Andrew Morris, a bit disappointing. No Andrew Morris, but then again, he's competed for four years in a row at this competition. And I think they really wanted to show what two of the newer faces at top at the top of um, men's gymnastics in Britain. They wanted to show their face and see what they could produce today. We have uh, a young lady called Henrietta Anodi from Hungary, age 12. Oh, she's tiny. I'm very, very impressed with her. She's great. Um, superb vault, very, very stylish on the bars, and I look forward to seeing her work the beam and floor. Very, very good. Well, let's uh, see where we stand at the moment in the latest scores. Uh, let me just explain that the ladies have reached the halfway stage. The men haven't quite reached that stage yet. The ladies, uh, the leader, as you can see there, is Natalia Froliva from the uh, Soviet Union. And Henrietta Anodi, who we talked about just now, a little 12-year-old, is in second place, equal with Polokova, and Lisa Elliott in third place from Great Britain. We won't give you the men's positions for the moment, but you will find out how they're getting on because we're going to join our commentators, Monica Phelps and John Taylor. We're now ready to start, ladies and gentlemen. There. Yeah. Waiting for the signal from the judges on the vault runway, David Moriel from the USA. Unusual gymnast, especially from the States, because he didn't take the sport up until he was 14 years old, and that's normally much too late. But he's 
somebody who's got enormous talent the men of course just one vault here he goes imperative he gets it right one arm handspring front somersault didn't quite make the rotation had to step back Lots of acceleration on the run, really necessary when they've only got that one volt. The one arm plant, a nice tight tuck, but he's dropping, almost sat down, and that step back will cost him badly. But here's the leader of the competition, Alexei Tikonkik from the Soviet Union. 18.8. After two pieces of apparatus, onto his third, the rings. Tikon Kik, very, very experienced, but even he's a bit nervous because he made quite a, a bad mistake on his first piece of apparatus on the floor. But a very solid worker, part of the USSR team at the World Championships, and he came second in this competition in 1981. Deacon Keek, as consistent as ever, well-finished dismount there from the rings. He really is holding it together well today. Moving on the lines now, ladies and gentlemen, down to the west end of the arena. And the first time this afternoon... The women now onto their exercise. third piece of apparatus. Our first competitor on this this afternoon is from the beam, Bulgaria. Diana Dudeva from Bulgaria. Number three, Diana Dudeva. Diana's 18 and she's lying in ninth position at the moment. But anything can happen here. Back somersault, back somersault. That's more the sort of class we expect from Dudeva. Very disappointing that she should be that far down in this field because she really is one of the most experienced gymnasts here. Lovely high Corbett flick performed first of all by Olga Corbett in Great Britain. back. Dudeva, a member of the World Championship team which came fourth in the World Championships in 85. The Bulgarians achieving their best ever placing for years. Arab Spring, double back somersault, piped. A very steady routine, lacking a little bit in elevation. But really beautiful gymnastics there from Diana. And here's the Flick flack and two straight back somersaults onto one leg and again. Difficult to perform on the floor, let alone on the beam. From Great Britain, Neil Thomas. Chick on Peak scored 9.5 for that rings exercise, but here's Neil Thomas from Great Britain to the vault. Good vault from Neil, full twisting Sukahara. He really has come on a bomb. We saw him four times in the Thames Junior Gymnast of the Year. But now he's really come through, changed shape, hardly recognizable. Good vault. Yes, and two twists there. He's number 23, Mitsuaki Watanabe. The Japanese champion, Mitsuaki Watanabe from Japan. And he's really concentrating now before he goes onto the rings. And, and well, he might, because he's not really had a very happy afternoon at all. Well down the field. 
made a real mess of his pommel horse exercise. Watanabe, an experienced gymnast in the World Championships in 85. Just a bit more like it from Watanabe. And of course the gymnasts, everything to go for because there are individual finals in this competition tomorrow. So as well as the overall championship, as long as they're in the top six on each individual piece of apparatus, they go through to the finals in this Craft International. She's now followed by competitor number four from Hungary, Henrietta Onodi. Diana Dudova scored 9.7, but this Henrietta Onodi from Hungary, 12 years old, just peeking over the top of the beam. And a head spring onto it. It was just about the right height for her. Lovely gain is straight back onto one leg. Already asserted herself in world rankings in the junior European. She was fourth in this piece of apparatus. Still that move from Mostapan of a half twist onto the hands and followed by a one-legged handspring. A tremendous gymnast, no nerves here, very at home, enjoying the big occasion. She's in second place, 19.15 after two pieces of apparatus. And she still thinks she can win it. Well, that's perhaps a competition, the agonizing hold, but eventually she couldn't hold it. The flick, straight back to one leg, straight back to one leg and off. And the sad thing was that she'd landed the difficult movement. It was really competence on coping with that little wobble. This, of course, is why young gymnasts are blooded into such big competitions so early. Double back tight. And isn't she fantastic? Brilliant. What a shame. That big mistake, 0.5 away. The last scorer on the vault was Neil Thomas from Great Britain. There, the men's position after two events. Alexei Tikonkik in the lead. We've, of course, seen his rings since that. But that's the position after two pieces of apparatus. Zhu Jing in second place, and Hiroyuki Kato from Japan in third. Dimitar Mitev from Bulgaria on vault. Dimitar, only 19 years old, a very tall gymnast. A one arm Sukuhara. Very powerful gymnast. Really attacking the runway, the one arm there. And he's now followed the full twist. By number 24 from Hungary, Laszlo Boda. Not well controlled, but a very explosive vault. And there, Hungary's Laszlo Boda, ready with his coach, going to rings. The coaches are allowed to lift the gymnast onto the rings, but must leave them in a stationary position before they start their exercise. Boda's got all the moves, he just needs to be able to 
tidy them up. Oh, and a lovely triple somersault dismount there. Did well to get around on that. Just to check up on some scores, Neil Thomas on the vault, 9.45. That keeps him going well. Watanabe, 9.5 on the rings. And Henrietta Anodi, unfortunately, down at 9.2 after that fall from the beam. Martina Velishkova to the beam. Lang in 10th place. Oh, very, very crafty there. Hung on to the beam and kept her on. She could be deducted for that. Three sixty degree turn. Well, she's got all the moves there, some nice sequences, some good difficulty, but on every one of them, she's doing them a little bit untidily. Tenths away here and there. If she stays on now, I think she'd be down in the low nines. Arab Spring double back. Well, that'll take her into the high eights, falling down onto her seat there. Nine point one for Dimitar Mitev on the vault, and this Hirayuki Kato in third position. Here he goes, the men of course just one vault, must get it right. Oh, and really good flight off the top of the horse. Full twisting Sukahara in the straight position off the near end of the horse. Really gathering tremendous speed, only 19, a really fit athlete, half on, full twist, and just look at that lovely extended shape before the landing. A really good vault. And onto the rings, the man in second place, Zhu Jing, the new hope from China. He needs 9.6 to take over the lead from Tikonkik. The Chinese junior champion. And he won it in such style that they made immediate comparisons between him and the great Li Ning. Double straight back dismount. A little bit too much compensation there at various times. Just overdoing his balances, but controlling them really well. She's now followed with the competitor from Canada, number six, Tracy Wilson. And there's the dismount, just losing his legs, but the end of a very good routine. Canada's Tracy Wilson to the beam. Velishkova from Czechoslovakia scored 8.55 after sitting down on her dismount. Tracy was reserved for the Canadian team at the World Championships in Montreal. Now hoping to earn a place in next year's World Championships in Rotterdam. Whoops, she won't do it. Falling off the beam though.
Judges look for little link-ups like that, balances on the shoulders, different shapes. A nice flick-flack half-twist there into the Urchenko backward circle. One of the most difficult elements, a D rating. A head spring, which can be used as a mount or in the middle of the routine. Grabbing as much beam as she can get there for her preparation. 16 feet of it, Arab spring flick, double twist. An excellent routine there from Tracy Wilson. Pity about the force and very good work. From the People's Republic of China on the vault once more, competitor number 14, Quang Shenyao. Well, the last person we saw to vault was Hiroyuki Kato from Japan, 9.5. This Quang Shenyao. Well, what a pity at the finish. It was beautiful form all the way through. One arm, handspring front in the pike position with half twist. Lots of speed hitting this new type of springboard with rubber springs, one arm plant. There's the front out, half twist, but just not controlling the landing. A very unfortunate fall back there, probably losing about three tenths. Su Jing, 9.2 there for his rings. So he doesn't overtake. Tikon Kik, and this is David Simpson from Great Britain. There he is, David Simpson, starts in the Simpson spindle, crosses over the ring wires and then lets them unfold. And that's the move that's now in the international code book for the sport as the Simpson spindle. Half lever cross there and you could see the strain on him. David down in ninth position before this and that's a much better exercise. He'll be very disappointed with his competition so far, and that must give him a lot of confidence, really getting back into it. Neil Thomas up in fifth position, but David way down in ninth, and he considers himself the senior of the British trio. Tremendous cheer for Karen Hargate, the youngest competitor that Britain has ever had in an international competition, 14-year-old. Lying in equal sixth position at the moment. Colin still, national coach, poised behind, ready to slip the board out from underneath her after her mount. in the British Championships and she's sharing that sixth position with the British champion Lisa Elliott so really enjoying herself and obviously nervous but doing very well at keeping her cool on the beam. Looking very steady Karen is a good competitor I hope I don't speak too soon. Slight wobble but just lacking elevation and good use of footwork. So far, though, no falls. Tracy Wilson, the Canadian who went before her on beam, scored nine with a fall. A nice double back there. And tremendous support from the home crowd for Karen. What a performance at 14 years old. Really good. Colin's still obviously delighted. Paul Bowler. 
Paul Bowler from Great Britain, the third of the British boys in because Yuri Podromsky from Russia couldn't compete. And a good vote from Paul. Paul Bowler. Down in 10th position, but always difficult coming into a competition when you haven't fully prepared. Tall boy, Paul. Lots of power, getting it all together there. The half twist onto the horse, a little bit of arm bend, but good flight. And a full twist in the Sukahara, rather low on the landing, but a really good effort at that fault. And in fact, 9 point 9.5 for Penta David Simpson on the rings. She will perform on the beam. And this on the USSR. Natalia Frolova from the USSR. She's in the lead. 19.55 her score. And of course, she's seen Henrietta Renaudi make a little bit of a mess of her beam routine. And she needs only 8.85 to stay in the lead. Oh, and really attacking that. Well, she tried to hang on. It was a fall the moment that she hung on with her hands onto the apparatus and then really came off. But she was going at such a pace. Yes, she was. She really tried to convert that fall into a movement. It just didn't quite work. That really throws the competition wide open now. Anidi in with a chance. Karen Hargate scored 9.35 for her consistent routine. Whoops. And she's off. At, oh, technical fall. Held onto the beam. She'll still lose five tenths. Well, this really a very strange performance almost from Frolova knowing that what she needed above all was a steady performance she took off at 100 miles an hour and has paid the penalty she's now being marked out of nine of course perhaps coming here she thought the pressure would be on emilienchik and then suddenly the pressure was on her i'm not sure whether i agree that emilienchik's injury is bad enough to withdraw the opposition is very strong and world champions don't like losing a nice double back dismount there from Frolova, but a very unfortunate beam. Some excellent work. And those two falls, quite unusual for a Russian. Emilienchik there, sympathising with her. Yes, well, that really has opened up the competition. The Russians looking as if they were well in control of both the men's and the women's competition, but now all wide open. We'll take a break there. Join us again in a couple of minutes. Of Hungary. Now, Haley Price, uh, we saw the women's leader, Frolova, come off the, uh, the beam. That must take her off the top. Yes, the competition has now been thrown wide open. We've seen an awful lot of mistakes on the asymmetric bars and the first round of the beam. I think um, whether the bars are slippy, I don't know. We've seen a nasty fall, and we've also seen Frolova um, fall off the beam twice once off the beam and once on the beam, which also counts as 0.5. Um, the little Hungarian produced a fantastic beam routine, but unfortunately she slipped as well. And what does that so, do to you? I mean, when, when you had a, a fall, what does that do to you emotionally? I mean, does that double the chance of it happening again? I think you've got to be very, very composed when you get back on again. Um, it does tend to lose your composure slightly, um, but the more experienced you are, the more you cope with it. Um, the little Hungarian coped with it very well. Um, you know, she's doing extremely well. Right, well, let's get back to the action then and rejoin Monica and John Taylor. Well, in fact, the judges are very, very kind indeed to Natalia Frolova. They didn't count the second fall as a full fall. Deducted only 0.3, so she got away with a 9.05 there on the beam. Keeps her in the lead. I think Monica and I both feel she was very, very lucky there. Paul Bowler, by the way, scored 9.3 for his vault. That moves him up the table he can be well pleased with that and the men's grouping split into two and this the second half of the group now about to vault Mitsuaki Watanabe the Japanese champion equal six at the halfway stage beautiful position there full twisting Sukahara Moving to the parallel bars for the first time.
These men, very light but extremely powerful. Watanabe only about 58 kilos. And look at that beautiful line before the landing. Smashing vault there. Well, live here at Wembley, Neil Thomas, the first up onto the parallel bars. His vault, something of a disaster, dropped him from fifth right down to ninth place. He's now just behind David Simpson. And they're losing his legs. Better there on the second diameter. The judges have increased Neil Thomas's vault mark to 9.6. Obviously, one of the judges didn't really have his specs on because he did two twists and that wasn't noticed. So when Neil gets off the podium after that routine, he'll hear the good news. Looks as though he jarred his ankle just a little on landing. Joint world champion Oksana Emelianchik. An unhappy competition for her so far. Couldn't vault, came off the asymmetric bars. Now, are we going to see some of the magic that she can produce here on the beam? Of course, still plenty to go for because this Craft International, a competition with individual finals as well, and she can still take a gold medal in that. Well, nice and fluent, but uh, a little wobble there. But she's looking very positive on this. Yes, this is the charisma. This is the Emilienchik special. Only comes once in a in a blue moon, really, and that's how she became world champion. But I do think that she's growing at the moment, and she's lost a little bit of her power, and this really is the problem. Well, that a very positive plant onto her injured ankle and I was trying to watch her face and there didn't seem to be any real wins there. There the Yurchenko. That actually wasn't meant to be. That was supposed to be a flick flack with a half twist. She hasn't been making it and Pashkaya, her coach, obviously has not let her take it out. She must have said something like, you're only doing three pieces, so do all of the moves. <laughs> Double twist to finish. Lovely routine, little error in the middle on her new move, but still that magic there. Moving back to the vault once more, Mitsuaki Watanabe, 9.45 his vault. It's now the turn A happier looking push guy. Yeah. From Hungary, that's Lord She's probably saying, well done. <laughs> Laszlo Boda from Hungary to the vault he's doing remarkably well in third position at the halfway stage and they're an unusual vault one arm double twist off Neil Thomas by the way 8.95 on the parallel bars and Watanabe 9.45 on his vault here's this vault again one arm plant two twists as he comes off Dimitar Mitev to parallel bars. Mitev trailing down in 11th position. But despite his size, only young, at 19, he's got lots of time ahead of him. Some promising aspects about his gymnastics. Yes, he's one of these gymnasts who has obviously got a lot of talent, but uh, he certainly hasn't learned to tidy it all up and make it look good. He finishes that. Oh, and Emelianchik score just come up. She certainly succeeded in impressing the judges there. 9.8. That means we'll certainly see her in the beam final. Our next competitor from the USA is number 10, Yolanda Mavity. Yolanda Mavity from America. Returning. She was in this competition last year. 
front somersault mount. Down in 11th place, she had a nasty fall on the asymmetric bars, but she's obviously recovered from it physically. It's lacking in extension in the movements, certainly has a difficulty. demonstrating mobility next to all of the tiny little waves of the gymnasts Yolanda looks quite hefty but as a normal girl she's not at all nice link there from Neil one-legged gainer back Crossed by her right foot, obviously her mark for her dismount. And a loose-legged double twist to finish. But certainly a very good recovery after her fall on asymmetric bars. Well, Laszlo Buda, 9.6 on his parallel bars. Sorry, on his vault. That a good score for him, and that's of particular interest to this man, Zhu Jing because before the vault he was in equal third position so he needs at least a 9.6 to stay in the medals originally from northern china but now training in peking full twisting sukahara there the chinese adopt a system of training where they move all their elite gymnasts to the school in peking and he's now been there for two years. Sukahara full twist. Not exceptionally well executed. But certainly a good ball. Hiroyuki Kato to the parallel bars. Kato is 22 and from Tokyo. Slack knees there on the lift. Half twist from the giant circle, almost like they perform on the high bar and the high and low bars, but they have to bend their knees because of the height of the bar from the floor. This isn't adjustable. It's a set height, about five feet, four inches from the floor. Plenty of lift there for that dismount. Boriana Stoyanova to the beam, 20-year-old Bulgarian, a finalist in the World Championships on floor. She's in fifth position, and she's just seen Yolanda Mavati score 9.3. Boriana's been out for almost a year with a very bad groin injury, and she's done extremely well to return to the sport at this level. Click, click, straight back. Glad to see she stayed on that. In training, she fell off almost every time. I thought, was it worth it? It's only a B element, but obviously she finds it difficult. Suffering from a sore back because of the amount of repetitions her coach made her do.
lovely combination, an Arab spring, which is usually used for a dismount, into a straight back on the beam. See how well these gymnasts know the end of the beam, not having to look back, just a little feel. Arab spring, rather a low double back, but a very well executed routine there. Just building yourself for that dismount. There's the Arab spring. Sorry, not the dismount. That was the Arab spring into the straight back somersault. Very difficult because she takes herself out of the line of the beam, but managed it well. Zhu Jing now fallen behind Boda. 9.3 scored for his vault. And Hiroyuki Kato, 9.55. Tremendous mark there for his parallel bars. David Simpson to the vault. Can he now stay ahead of Neil Thomas? Oh, a good flight off the horse. Couldn't quite control it at the end, but the full twisting Sukahara. Eddie Van Hoof commentating, commenting on it as he returned, and here we see the slow motion. Tremendous depression of the board there. A nice tight twist, but a little low with his chest on landing, and he sat back and lost probably about two tenths on that landing. David Simpson coming through well. Eddie Van Hoof there coaching the British boys today. Boriana Stoyanova, 9.65 for her beam. Huang Shanghao on the parallel bars. Obviously an advantage, this piece of apparatus, to small gymnasts. An unusual dismount. Nice to see something from the end of the P-bars. A double back somersault. David Simpson, 9.3 for his vault. Yes, we're now ready for our next beam exercise this afternoon. Following on Boriana Stoyanova, who scored 9.65, we have competitor... Iveta Polakova. Czechoslovakia. Iveta Polakova. Czechoslovakia in third position third position at the halfway stage 19.1.4 behind Anodi but of course Anodi fell on the beam and she's got a great chance here if she stays on to make up a great deal on Frolova and Anodi but she couldn't the pressure getting to everybody on the beam today. It does tend to be one of those pieces of apparatus that uh, once somebody falls, then they all start falling. Yes, I thought Polakova might have been able to uh, resist that. She's ranked fourth in the world on beam. So one would have thought with her experience, she could have mastered the movements under this pressure. Not nearly as great as in a world championship. But there again, this is a the best competition I have ever seen at Wembley. Some tremendous gymnasts here. Very unusual dismount, a cartwheel into a double back somersault. I wouldn't fancy even doing the dismount, but from a cartwheel, very, very frightening. Here is that dismount. Neil Thomas in round four, number 17. Cartwheel as against the Arab Spring, staying halfway on and then going into the double. Nice dismount. Huang Xianyao, 9.3 for his parallel bars. The PA announcer just getting a great cheer from the audience as he announces that Neil Thomas's score has been upgraded. That information we gave you a little while back. And here's the leader in the competition, Alexei Tikonkik. 
from the Soviet Union. If he makes a mistake here on this vault, it really is very wide open. He needs 9.3 to keep his lead. Very nice vault. Cuervo will hopefully see it in slow motion. Here he goes. The Cuervo as distinct from the front with half twist because he gets the twist in there really early and ends up coming straight out. It's a beautiful vault. Look at the flight he gets off the top of the horse. That certainly got him his 9.3. A tremendous response by Tikon Kik, but that's what we expected. Very, very experienced. The sort of man that the uh, Russian coach Arkiev loves to have down at his bottom order in his team event. The big cheer though for Paul Bowler. Paul, very fortunate to get put into this competition at the last minute. Tremendous experience for him, even though he's down in 10th position at 19. He need worry. From the central Manchester Gymnastic Club, coached by Colin Lee. Oh, rather an unusual way of falling, John. Well, I'm not sure whether he just lost the Diamadov all the way through or whether he was, in fact, going for the one and a quarter. He certainly ended up... Uh, on one bar. Now, from the way he's mounting, he was going, I think, for the Diamidov one and a quarter, a very difficult move. The howl of disappointment from the crowd. But Paul, very philosophical, isn't he? He manages to keep his cool and get on and treat this purely as a competition of experience. The Stutz turns there. He does lose his legs a little on this piece of apparatus. Double back finish though, that was good enough. Paul Bowler of Great Britain, number 15. Moving to the west end of and this the is and back to little Neria Esbrit from Spain having a tremendous competition in joint third place with 19.1. Number seven, Nerea Esbrit. Nerea has just seen Polakova's score come up at 9.15, so she knows exactly what she has to beat. I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing at this late stage. Arab Spring flick, mount. Just holding on to that straight back. I know Lisa Elliott will be watching Nerea very closely because she just pipped Lisa by three tenths in the World Championship. And I'm sure that that would be a personal challenge to Lisa. I hope she's not smiling right now. Difficult move going there for the side somersault. All these moves where you have to twist in the move, change your line, so difficult on that four inch beam. Confident expression. In the Eastern Bloc Friendship Games, Nerea came 14th. So obviously she's an improving gymnast. A little breather before her dismount. Mustn't stand too long or she'll have a deduction. And a very well controlled double back dismount. Well, Lisa Elliott knows exactly what she's up against now. She has to try and stay on to pick Nerea. Before that, our last fault was Alexei Tikonkik of the USSR, the last in round five. His score 9.4. Well, Alexei Tikonkik got 9.4 for his vault. Our final competitor in rotation. Paul Bowler, unfortunately, 7.9 for his parallel bars. And the next one up on that piece of apparatus, David Mariel from the USA, 22 years old, didn't take up the sport until he was 14. He's a student at uh, UCLA, where the Olympic gymnastics was held.
very good control demonstrated on that mount. David started off with not a very good floor and now he's having quite a consistent competition, coping really well. Of Italian stock, studying Italian history at university. Obviously more to this man than meets the eye. Well, just one step back there on the landing. He'd moved up to sixth, equal David sixth at halfway. Can he push himself further? The bars exercise. I think I forgot again to give you the score of Paul Bowler from Great Britain, number 15, on the parallel bars, scored 7.90. Well, we're waiting for Lisa Elliott there, the waiting, me a chance to tell you a bit having to wait because Nerea Esprit's score hasn't as yet been posted. That means that there's some disagreement between the judges. The competitor must execute a series of One of the things the gymnasts have to learn to cope with, if you've got yourself very keyed up, then this can be a very nerve-wracking moment. But Lisa looks as if she's uh, fairly relaxed. There are the judges. A re-checking of what they saw and what they didn't see. The score's just gone up. Nine dead, her score. Our final competitor in round five with her beam exercise is from Great Britain. She is number eight, Lisa Elliott. Sixth position. At the halfway. Oh, and their disaster straight away. And look how angry she is with herself. Very unfortunate. I was just about to say the one thing that I do recall more than anything from my days as a gymnast was that horrible feeling of butterflies in my tummy before going into beam. Lisa must have been experiencing just that. Now she has to recover. to recover that. Good high split leap there with the half turn. But still, despite how good a gymnast she is, it's still a typically British routine. I feel they're fast, too slow. The Continentals work at a much faster and more interesting pace. Colin still with condolences, and here right at the beginning it went wrong. Arab Spring, the back flick on, and just that tiny bit offline. In fact, it looks as if she tried to overcorrect it there. And this, the other part of the exercise where there'll be a major deduction, at least point three away here. Real struggle there. She did so well. Well, that the last exercise there in, in round five. The gymnasts now warming for the next round. Both competitions very, very close. The beam really sorting out the girls and Tikonkik holding on in the men's competition. Join us after the break. <laughs>